Today we are going to be talking about something very interesting that is pretty much new in Maya and that is going to solve a lot of problems. So the new thing that has been added to Maya 2022 is called the Sweet Mesh and it's going to solve a lot of problems regarding creating something like pipes or wires and something like that because there wasn't exactly an easier way to create something like a pipe or wire and if you had to do it, uh, the traditional method was, uh, let me show you the old method, uh, we had to take a CV curve tool. Right, and we basically generate something like this. Let's say this is something like maybe a wire or something, or maybe some kind of pipe. So this is my cylinder, and from here again you can reduce the divisions or something like that if you want. And you can select the face, you can select the curve, and you simply hit extrude, and then you can increase the amount of divisions you want. That will that's how pretty much you have to create something to get an exact pipe or something like that. Which was a pretty hectic way if you if you are creating a scene which has a lot of wires or pipes. So that's not the case anymore. So Maya has introduced something called as the sweet mesh, or which is uh, pretty amazing, and we'll see how it works in every way. So this is one method, or uh, the earlier method was um, you can select a simple curve or something like this, and uh, then again you can extrude this. You have to change some parameters um, in the extrude menu to get that exact shape and everything but yeah this was the old method now let's say you want to create something like a pipe or a wire and uh, this is how you do it now so select your curve all right and uh, i'm gonna just draw a random shape to something like this and let's uh, quickly deform it let's maybe change it a bit we just gonna Randomize this just so it's a bit more interesting to watch it move. Alright, so I think this looks pretty interesting. I'm just gonna lift this up. This. And on. Alright, so we have a pretty interesting shape that looks um, something like this. Alright, we are good to go. So now again, um, the way how sweet mesh works, I'm just take this in the center. So the way Sweet Mesh works is you select any curve or spline that you have in your scene and you go to create and here you will find something called a Sweet Mesh. You click on it and there you go. You have created your polygon. So I'm just going to turn on the wireframe mode just so we can see what's going on here. And the first thing I'm going to talk about is the Sweet Profile. So we have a lot of different profiles of how you are creating your Sweet. Now for example we have a polygon. Now because the profile has been set to poly. You'll notice that the type has been set to circle. You can also change it to star if you want or keep it to circle. The division that we have is 8 here, but if you want, you can increase the amount of divisions that you want. You can also put in your own custom number. And if you want, you can lower this down or increase it even more. It's totally up to you. As you can see, by default, sweep opens up your uh, entire object. So if you want, you can put a cap on it that will close the whole object. Apart from that, again, if you put on the cap, it will also work with the star. Now again, uh, the next profile that we have is the rectangle, which gives uh, you a rounded rectangle. Again, you have the segments for the corners. As you can see, we have only two. And you can keep increasing this if you want a bit more uh, rounded rectangle. And again, you can change how the depth is actually working on this. If you want an inside uh, bevel or the outside bevel, and you can change the height and so on. Uh, play around with the radius. You can change the width of it and so on. Similarly, you have the line, which is pretty much just a flat, uh, polygon um, extruded along the curve. Then you have the arc. Again, uh, you can see a kind of a half cut in cylinder type of shape. And then you have the wave, which gives you a planar polygon with a little bit of wave uh, to play around with. Right? Again, you can transform any of these parameters if you want. Uh, it's totally up to you how much angle you want on your sweep and so on. And then finally, we have custom. Now the interesting thing about the custom is you can create your own custom shapes and you can extrude them along the paths. For example, I'm going to take a simple shape uh, and I'm just going to extrude this. Uh, let's say we'll create something like, we'll select this and uh, we'll just try to create a random shape out of it. All right. And uh, let's select some faces here and maybe let's extrude this. And there you go. Right, so this is my overall polygon and this is my custom shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this sweep. We don't need it anymore. And I'm going to create another sweep. 
one day three days so you finish what you can do is you can click on custom all right and it will ask you what type of object you have so i'm going to choose a poly object and it will ask you to select a profile i can select simply select on my polygon and there you go i'm going to click on okay and uh, I'll, I'm just going to hide this object, hit H on your keyboard, now I'm going to go to my suite and uh, then we can talk about the rest of the parameters. So again I can put on a cap on it if I want. So here we have the distribution, we are going to talk about the distribution in a while. Uh, let's first talk about the scale profile which is overall um, how broad your object is, how large your, the overall scale of your object. So you can change that and again then you have the rotate profile if you want to rotate this object, right? if you want to press this, you have that option as well which gives a pretty interesting look and then you have the taper if you want to increase or decrease the taperness of this and so on so you can do that kind of stuff and then you have the taper curve which you can pretty much add your own custom type of uh, curve if you want to create your own uh, look for the taper how smooth or tangent you want it to be apart from this then you have the interpolation now here is uh, if you look at your sweep it's pretty low poly sometimes so if you want to increase the subdivision, this is how you do it. Uh, the more has been set to precision, you can set it to start and we will talk about how this works. The first thing is the precision. Precision is the overall, uh, you can say, subdivision of your polygon. If you increase this, you'll have more polygons. The interesting thing about the sweep is it has this optimize function, which allows us to create divisions only in the areas where you actually need them. For example, in this section, uh, if you look, uh, look at this curve, this is pretty... Um, you can see a tiny space for a curve to bend or a polygon to bend so we'll need more polygons here or more subdivisions here so what i can do is i can click on optimize and it will only add um high amount of polys where it is needed apart from that it won't add many to all the areas if you remove this it's going to it's pretty much uniform so it's going to add uh, the subdivisions to all the areas or the overall polygon. So again, you can change how you want it to be, how you want uh, the overall interpolation mode to be. You can increase this and you can uh, play around with the overall uh, different modes. Again, you can keep it to optimize. It's totally up to you. Right? Uh, and uh, I'm going to get uh, rid of this. I'm going to select this. And uh, again, I'm going to create a new recipe. And let's maybe take a uh, protein side. Let's keep it as a circle. And I'm just gonna go to my interpolation. I'm gonna increase some precision here. This looks pretty good. And the interesting thing about uh, another interesting thing about sweep is if you go to the distribute, uh, if you're creating a scene where you have a lot of wires, like for example, you are uh, there's a mechanic working and there's a car or something like that, and there's a lot of wires lying around. If you want to create something like that, you can simply click on distribute. And what it's gonna do is basically uh, scatter some more instances of that cylinder on top of that curve. You can increase the number of instances you want, how much distribution you want, for example, six. Then again, you can change the scale of those instances. For example, you have a pretty small wire, copper wires or something like that. And then again, you can rotate them if you want, totally up to you. Uh, it's pretty hard to see the rotation, but my, there you go. And again, you can change the amount of coverage, how much it's uh, pretty much, sometimes you don't want it to be radial, you want it to be something like this, uh, like it uh, has been attached to a wall or something or a corner of the ceiling, so you can have that. Again, you can change it to square if you want, and uh, there are a lot of different presets for this, if you want it to be linear, if you want it to be radial or something like that, and then you have the alignment, you can change the alignment, how it should be aligned to the curve and so on. So yeah, um, a lot of problems are going to be fixed after this. Uh, a lot of hectic work has been solved after the sweep mesh, so I'm pretty excited about this one. And in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use the sweep mesh to create an interesting uh, looking app. Right? So that will be it for this one. Enjoy the sweep mesh, and I'll see you in the next video.